Greetings and welcome to the second day of Kwanzaa, Kuji Chagalia, where we define ourselves, name ourselves, speak for ourselves, and create for ourselves. Self-determination in our achievements, whether they be academic, sports, family, or self-determination in understanding our culture, our legacy, our lineage, and our history is very important in Kwanzaa ceremony and in our community in general. So if you remember, I started off the ceremony with asking the elders if I had permission to speak. The elder will say yes or no that I have permission to speak. And once I get the okay from my elder, I will proceed with the ceremony. Remember, the black candle represents the people. The red is for our struggle and green is for overcoming our struggle and going into a more prosperous mindset and statehood. After lighting the black candle, I will light the red candle for Kuji Chagalia the second day. Remember, we're going to go left to right, inward and outward. You could then pass around the Unity Cup and put in your intentions for positivity as a group. Then, when I receive the Unity Cup back, I'll begin the libation ceremony. In this particular libation ceremony, I would like to honor my great-grandmother, Eva Lou Holman, Ashe, my other great-grandmother, George Duzonson, Madame George Duzonson, Ashe, Marie Canton, and I would like to honor the uncle that I never met, but I just met his daughters. It's a really cool story, but anyway, Ashe. We can also honor Malcolm X, Ashe, Ivy Wells, Ashe, Sojourner Truth, Ashe, and Harriet Tubman, Ashe. I think leaving it off on Harriet Tubman is great because she is such a beautiful demonstration of self-determination. After the libation ceremony, I would then ask everyone in my family or the group slash community what self-determination means for them and how they would like to practice self, self and how they would like to practice self-determination in the new year. Fasting or abstaining from food is done during Kwanzaa, uh, during the last week. It's probably one of the best times to fast. You know, you people are setting goals and New Year's resolutions. So it's a time to cleanse your mind, soul, and spirit. You know, I'm not saying to put yourself through harsh conditions, but there are and have always been people who have been suffering. Um, one important fact that uh, Kwanzaa stands on in the celebration of the struggle, you know, and how much and how progressive we are as a people. I had a deep conversation with an Indian man basically reminding me that during the month of April, as most of you all know, is like Ramadan and the end of like most religious fastings to say that basically all these religious people, people who don't look the same, they come from different backgrounds, different continents, they all come together and they like support each other. Um, you know, even though they worship differently, they lean on one another. Why do they do this? Because without human touch, without unity, they would have nothing to fall on during those times when they're not eating at all during the day. Another reminder is to not be upset with our children when they're eating with their hands. 
you know, it's kind of nasty sometimes. Here in America, we don't see it. I don't mean to say it's nasty. God forgive me. But, um, you know, brown skin people eat with their hands um, worldwide. You take a look at your hands. Um, you know, take a look at your hands and fingers. Put them together. You can count on your hands, you know, your mommy, your babas, your aunties, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your friends, everyone that you love. Without these hands, without these bonds, who are we? You know, what do we have? What are we carrying? Who are we carrying? <laughs> you know, we are always leaning on one another, whether we are fasting and most importantly, you know, fasting worldwide, we need people to uplift each other. It doesn't even have to be fasting, just understanding the use of your hands and what that means. You know, you cre you can create a home with your hands. There's so much you can create. And so just really understanding that is important. Have you ever heard of Victoria Falls? Located on the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls is one of the most, if not the most impressive waterfall. It's over 1.7 kilometers wide and 100 meters tall. Victoria Falls is the largest curtain of falling water globally. Maybe one day you can go to Africa and check out Victoria Falls. I think self-determination is one of the biggest ones for me. I've actually have held the most um, people together. You know, the day after unity, uh, with people at the library celebrating with the community and self-determination is that day. And, you know, reading books, digging up research, you know, educating yourself is one of the strongest ways to show self-determination because you, you want to learn, you want to collaborate, you want to get to the bottom of something. And just discovering that knowledge um, when it's shared, it's, it's a huge investment. Are you aware of the stories of slaves fighting back for their freedom? Do you know of Joseph Sinke, the Congolese chief, who was aboard the Amistad and was charged with murder and piracy? But what makes this story so interesting is that John Quincy Adams eloquently was able to convince the judge in the case to not only let Joseph Sinke go back to Africa, but to take his tribe with him. So can you imagine being in America, almost becoming a slave, and then because someone was able to defend you and your right for self-defense, you were able to return home. These are the stories that we hardly hear about. So next time you want to practice self-determination, Kuji Chagalia, or give someone a story about Kuji Chagalia or self-determination, definitely pass on the story of Joseph Sinke. I really love the Kawita questions and they come from ancient Africa um, and it's it's integrated into Kwanzaa again people are doing goals and you know reaffirming and reassessing who they are so just asking yourself who am I am I really who I say I am and am I really all I ought to be you know everyone can look in, in the mirror and see themselves for who they truly are and sometimes it doesn't you know, it's not the sweetest taste when you when you really get to know who you are. But this is a time, again, when you cleanse your body, it's a time to really ask yourself humbly, not to beat yourself up, but just to align yourself, you know, um, being pure, especially with just connecting with who Africans should be, why we were created on this world, what everyone likes to talk about throughout the year and brag about. Just knowing that the symbols of Kwanzaa and the values of Kwanzaa have always been a part of um, Africa and its traditions way before the founder of Kwanzaa was even born. Knowing that every year that you celebrate Kwanzaa, it gets better and better, especially when, you, when you're when you learning the simple, simple, the simple symbols of Kwanzaa, such as, you know, what the mat stands for and what you know, the Kanara stands for and all the candles and their meanings and the symbols. Just understanding, um, you know, what, what that looks like for you and other families and, you know, how you can be creative 
but I just want to say happy Kwanzaa to every um, African person. And, um, you know, in the words of our ancestors, Ashe and I wish you all a good and a beautiful holiday, um, a beautiful life in general. Remember that this time is for African people, for you to remember the traditions of your own history, you know, digging deeper because every year you're going to keep on growing. So why not, you know, do that for you? Um, but let's use this opportunity to build even greater connections with one another, whether it's in person or online. It's very important that we continue to, you know, meet with each other and connect with one another in person because now more than ever, ever it's like separation and people are just not how they used to be. So just keep going, you know, and be inspired. So happy Kwanzaa, Ashe to everyone. Thank you. One of the ways that we can practice self-determination is declaring economic freedom. Have you ever thought of creating passive income or a side business that can help make more financial income for your future, retirement, or legacy? This is important in order to create more ways for us to be free in the way that we not only deal with money matters, but deal with matters in our family, travel, and accounts. You can take the time to gather with family and friends and create t-shirts, homework, motivational videos, educational videos, or other unique and creative ways to start bringing in passive income and economic stability into your family or even for yourself. Wishing you much prosperity and self-determination in the upcoming spring.